All right, so we left it off where we have a way to actually submit their email from a regular HTML form. So what we're gonna do is convert this form into an Ajax form, and we actually have a lot of it already done, but before I jump into it, I wanna change the location of this modal to being a little bit closer to the center um, instead of at the very top. It's fairly easy to do. Uh, we just go into base.html, and inside of our styles, so this is obviously our custom styles, I'm gonna put underneath alert top message, I'm just gonna do dot model or modal dialog and margin top being 25%. And if we refresh, we notice that it, oh, well actually 25% is probably a little too big. Uh, so it, it jumped down quite a bit. Um, so let's actually do 20%. That way it's a little bit closer to the center, at least on this page. And if we go to the products, it's the same thing. Um, so it's gonna really depend on how big the actual page is itself, but um, that looks all right. So right there should work. And then also if we resize it, it will continue to change its location as well, uh, which also works for us. Okay, cool. Um, so now that we have that, let's start converting that modal into a Ajax function. Um, so if we scroll down, We've got our function show modal. Um, now what we wanna do is actually have a function for our button. So very similar to like what we've got here. That is of course a function for when the button is clicked, not necessarily for the button itself, but when it's clicked, something happens. Um, so we can actually go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna paste it underneath show modal. Um, uh, although I wanna keep that timeout right up there cause we'll eventually put that back in. All right, so now we need to change this button. Let's call it um, send marketing form. So that's just the actual button ID that we'll give it. And then we're gonna change this URL here. And we need some other stuff to get rid of that. All right, so, and I'll also get rid of this alert. So we have the bare bones of Ajax here. Um, so let's go ahead and add in our button form here. So in modal. Uh, we'll go down to our button and you just say ID equals to send marketing form, just like that. And now what I'm gonna wanna do is actually name this form or give this form an ID itself because we're gonna be getting the data from this form when it's submitted. So I'll just give it an ID of marketing form, All right? So marketing form being that. Um, all right, so now that we've got this, we can go ahead and check out our function here a little bit. So instead of doing the Ajax call, I'm just gonna comment it out for a second. So when we click on a button, what are we trying to do? We're trying to actually send that form somewhere, right? So what we need to do is actually prevent that from being happening. And jQuery has this nice function that allows us to do it. And that is, um, well, something. So I'm just gonna write something and then dot prevent default. Now that something's already coming through, and if we pass it into our function as an event, um, or E for short, then we can use that right here. So E.PreventDefault will allow us to prevent the form from being sent by default, right? So if we look into our, our form itself, we've got this action here, and all I did right there with, with jQuery was prevent that action from actually happening. Um, and also I'm gonna change the form ID to send form and just keep it as that, um, just to make it a little bit more concise. Um, so we've got this ID and we've got this action and what I did was is I prevented that default action from happening. So now I wanna actually get the data from that form prior to, well, after I prevent the default from happening, let's go ahead and grab that data. So var, I'll just say m form equals to the dollar sign and we're gonna call it send form. And then we're gonna serialize that. And then from here, let's go ahead and console.log m form. Just so we can see what that looks like. Okay, so let's go back in Chrome. Let's do a little re refresh. Oh, we got this URLs being empty. So if we look back into our URL function here, we actually need to comment this out as well because even um, though it's commented out from the HTML and JavaScript side, um, we still need to comment out from the Django side. All right, so we go back in here, refresh, 
our model pops up, our modal pops up, excuse me, and we'll go to inspect element here and we'll look in our console. And if I hit submit, well, it looks like it's not working right now. So let's actually make sure everything's saved up. Do another refresh, hit submit again. And after everything's saved, notice it says the middleware token and then it also has email. So what that serialized did was it got all the data from the actual form, which is really nice. So it actually allowed me to grab that data. Notice that the email is not saying that this field is required anymore, um, which is something that we'll have to work on. Um, so, but for now we have the way to actually grab the data. Um, so going back into this Ajax, we can uncomment this stuff out. Since we have the data, all we have to do here is we can get rid of this and just grab the data, so inform. So the data is the data from the form itself uh, and it has the token that we need, so it's actually gonna show that. And then success, we'll just do console log worked and then error, we'll say console log error, which we'll actually work on in just a moment as well. Um, so let's go back into our project, do a refresh and coding for entrepreneurs, hit submit. And we have, cons we have the console log of worked and we also have the serialized data. Uh, great, so I can now get rid of this console log of the data. And now let's actually go ahead and take a look at our terminal and see what happened in there. Uh, we don't have anything from our terminal, so let's go ahead and look into our views. And I added this print request.post. Um, so now we wanna make sure our URL is actually working and the URL should go where the um, view is actually set up for it. So if we go in uh, URLs, we have Ajax email signup. So we're gonna just use that same URL that we did on the model or the model itself. And so now we just need to put our URLs here. So percent and percent and then our URL name. And now let's go back in, refresh. Modal pops up, go ahead and hit submit. And it says worked and we get our query here. So this is the post data itself. Um, so let's go back into our view for it. And um, notice it says HTTP response success, yet we didn't see success, we just see worked. So let's actually, instead of success, instead of doing console log worked, let's do console log data. All right, so we refresh in here coding for entrepreneurs, of course, make sure you're saving everything. And notice it says success and the data. Um, so what we see on our view itself, um, this stuff is actually sending it back. It's sending back this HTTP response and it's just a string of text, right? It only is showing this, uh, which is great. So we actually now can see that it's a successful email um, and we could actually clean this up to make it JSON to where when it comes back, it's actually JSON. Um, so now let's do it with errors. So I'll hit submit now. And now it's actually sending back an array, but it's still, it's not actually running an error at all, right? So form.errors should actually return a HTTP response error of some kind, right? It should actually say that it's a bad request. It's not a good request because there is some error with the form. So what we need to do is actually import the bad request. So we'll go from django.http HTTP import HTTP respo uh, response bad request. And we're gonna use this instead of HTTP response. So now, um, and another thing to note about what we're doing here is we just log, we just log this, we didn't log error. Right, this right here should say error. It should not actually show anything. All right, so let's save everything. Just make sure everything's saved with the bad response. And now we'll do a refresh and I'll just do coding, just coding, hit submit. Notice it says, now it says bad request and our console log says error, which that is what we want to see, right? We want it to actually run an error of some kind. Now, of course we are dumping the errors of actually what they are so we can display those errors in a way that's a little bit more uh, user friendly than what we've got here, right? So this doesn't actually show us any errors, so we need to display them. Um, so let's go back into our base template here. 
and we can pass through data because data is actually coming through. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at that data. And then there's one piece of the data that I also want to show you is data.response.json. So response JSON, because we are sending JSON data back. So we will see that as well. So I'm going to refresh in here, type coding, hit submit. And we have two things here. We have the first object right here. This is the actual data that's being passed. So we can use all this kind of data. But this, like, so you see response text being in here. And response JSON is a JSON object, so we can use it. Response text is OK, but it's not, it's not actually that great for us. We actually want to use the JSON data so we can set it equal to a variable. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and co comment out that first data right there. And then we're going to do var object equals to data dot response JSON. And now we can say console dot log will do object and console dot log object dot email. And I'll explain why those are there in just a second. So now we just do coding hit submit. Okay, so I have a few of them coming through. We have that first object, right? So that's that first one showing up. Obviously, there's the error, the bad request. But then this is the first one. So I'm actually going to comment that out. And let's run it again. So we just sh should see two console log things here. Hit submit. And we see first off the one being an object. And that, of course, is this right here. And then we see the actual error for object.email. Uh, so if I open up object, I see that email is in here. And then there's an array. It says enter a valid email address. Um, so what we see right here is it's showing us what's actually being sent back with the error itself. So if we look in our view, right? So when we do form.errors, that is giving us the error for the specific form field or whatever, right? So if we actually look back in a form, it's giving us the error for this one right here, all right? That's what it's doing. Um, so that's why we're seeing here being email and then enter a valid email address. So that's being converted here. That's what's going on there. So if we also look at the terminal, um, we, we will see the um, errors right here. So this is the form errors right here. And it says email and then enter valid list. So that's that print statement right there. Okay, so now that we actually have this error, we need to display this error. So going back into Sublime Text, we go into our base.html, and now we want to have somewhere where we'll display the error. So let's go ahead and say, I'm gonna just write a new one called modal error. I don't actually have an error yet, but I'll do HTML, and I'll just do a p tag, and I'll plus object.email plus and then another p tag right there. So since I've selected something and then replaced the HTML that's in it with something new, let's go ahead and make that so that error. And I'll just give it a PID of modal error. And it's going to be an empty p tag. Refresh in here. All right. And let's go ahead and type coding again. Hit submit. Notice it says, now it says the actual error. And I can do it at gmail.com and resend it. And if we look into our inspect element, it should say success. And then the email, right? And it does down here. So this same error, or we could just call this modal message change this to modal message. So now we could even say the modal message is just data. All right, so now we do it again. Close this out, coding, hit submit, and then coding at Gmail, hit submit again, and it's a success. Okay, cool. So I can also add style, color, red for it being incorrect. Um, and then also after we're done with this, then we can dismiss the marketing modal. So I'd grab this and say dismiss 
or hide, not dismiss. So this will actually show the message briefly and then hide it. So I'm gonna get rid of this console log stuff or I'll leave it for you guys to see in the code, but we don't need it. Especially, we definitely don't need it to show up in the console. Um, all right, so now we've got that. That's all working. So now if I do coding and hit submit, it gives me a red color. If I did coding at Gmail, hit submit. It did say success briefly and then it went away. Um, great, so that also means that in our view, we're gonna wanna, when it is successful, we're gonna say request.session and we'll say um, email added marketing, something like that. And we'll just say true. Okay, so now in here, in our show modal, let's go ahead and comment out this one and we'll set a new timeout, right? And before this function, we'll do if not request.user.is authenticated. And if and not, or and, excuse me, and not uh, request dot session dot, uh, let's go ahead and look at that view again. And we called it email added marketing, or we could just call it email added. Okay. And then at the very end of all these, these two functions, put end if. So now the user is authenticated. So if I log out, go back in e-commerce, after a few seconds, it should pop up. So we'll inspect our element here and there it goes. And if I did coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail, um, hit submit. Oops, coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail. There we go, this is success. And if we go to another page, should not show up ever, right? So that should actually just leave it out completely. Um, and we see that the marketing message is showing here, but the other one is not. And that's because we just added this to the session. So now if we log in and log out again, so log in and then log out, this is gonna add it back because we just have that, ses the session was just deleted and it just created a new session. So after a few seconds, now it shows up again, and I do coding for entrepreneurs at Gmail, hit submit. It's not gonna show up again, at least for this session, uh, which is good. That's what we want to see. All right, so I'm gonna leave it at that for now. Um, in the next one, we will actually save this email somewhere. Uh, that's gonna be fairly easy to do. Um, all right, so if you have any questions now, let me know. Otherwise, let's keep going.